In this video, we're going to demonstrate how we uh, treated a patient with a chronic type B dissection, a fairly complicated patient. She had infrarenal repair, a bare stent extending up across her visceral segment, now needed a proximal stent graft placed. Uh, but the focus of this is really the, uh, the fact that uh, this was supported entirely remotely by a um, off-site um, re representative personnel. Um, the way that we did this is that uh, we have what was called the Visitor 1. This is a remote controlled uh, robot. Uh, this flat panel can be moved basically in multiple different directions. There's two cameras on it and you can see we can put input a variety of different sources from the room. Um, fluoroscopy, ultrasound, cameras, you can choose what you want. This is the view really from the uh, rep who's supporting this case. Um, he wears a headset so that he can communicate with us directly. Um, and he has two views, the camera view um, and also the fluoroscopic view, which he can control whether it's one or two of these. If you look at from the certain interventionalist side, then at the bottom of the table we have the setup. This means that they can pivot and actually check the device, look at the expiration date in the device, and they can uh, communicate with us directly. And they're having a direct fluoro feed, which is coming off the, the fluoroscopic monitor directly to them. Um, you'll notice we're also, I'm also wearing a headset. This is a, a Bluetooth headset that we're actually wearing here. This headset is very valuable uh, because it really one of the challenges with these remote support systems really the audio communication less the video communication so here you can see highlighted the cameras and the headsets which Bluetooth and connect directly into that um, uh, viewing system and you'll hear a little bit of the communication that's going on we've actually already done fusion and the remote the the and so we're communicating uh, with. So you want uh, to go ahead and pitch the graft, or you want to shoot first? Uh, you, can uh, you can go ahead and pitch the graft. Uh, nothing here. We're gonna. Okay, Rich, we're doing that. In thirty-one by thirty-one by twenty. So can you show? So can you show him? Can you show him the box? Oh, here's turn my way. And so that's communication that's taking place uh, with the circulators, uh, the scrub tech the uh, interventionalist, and the remote viewing um, personnel. It went really easy last time. Yeah. Are you good? Are you good? All right, give me that. Right, give me that. Shake and run. And so we're talking up through the placement, basically, of the device. Um, the device is now going to be advanced up to just to the level of the subclavian artery. Good job, Good job Greg. Nice, nice job. Nice job. The and the fusion and the accuracy yep. of the fusion. Yep. Okay. okay. Well, we're also monitoring transcranial Doppler. We do that in every uh, thoracic endograft um, so we know when embolization is occurring. Here the device has been moved up into position. I'm about to do the, the device is now in place. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean we, can, we can readjust this once it's deployed. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can pull it back. We can't really advance it forward. So a little bit of forward pressure. So set up the injector like 10 for 10, please. So we're going to deploy it about right there. Give me just a second to get to the injector. Yeah, OK. So I'm deploying. And so as you see, the device is being deployed. Um, the reason uh, the rep's a little more difficult to hear is because he's not on the Bluetooth headset, but he can hear us very well. Let's extend it. And uh, the device is now being deployed. Network. 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 Making a distal extension into the bare spring. Oh, oh good job, Tim. Okay. To the level, basically, of the seal. Oh, oh, okay. um, and then we checked us. Yeah. Let's deep. Good. Good. LEO. Yep. And so, bottom line is that, I know, I know, that. this case was performed uh, using completely remote support uh, that we've created an online app by which um, both the operator and the support personnel evaluate this and this has proven to be very acceptable by proctor and trainee alike. Uh, this has been incredibly valuable during COVID um, and can be a huge cost saver for industry. Uh, it's also relatively easily set up by in-room staff, so we don't need any uh, particular personnel uh, to be available to support this. So I'm a strong advocate for remote support. Uh, we can often do this with more than one person um, if there are multiple different devices that are being used. Thank you for your attention.